I got my grandma to agree to give us a tour of her house and I am so excited to show you guys everything that's inside and to give you a little bit of insight into the history behind this house. So without further ado, let's get into it. In the early 1980s, my husband of 25 plus years decided that he had a girlfriend and I and my six children were no longer the priority that I, I felt that we needed to be. So I was left with this beautiful home that we had worked in the 1970s for three years building for our family. Oh, we got the dogs. The foyer, as you see, has stone, uh, the stone towers from the outside come right on into the interior of the house. And the stonemason was really kind of funny. He didn't order any of the stone from a stone quarry. He just brought the stone home from fishing trips and all that. Evidently his yard, wherever it was, was filled with all kinds of stones. But this beautiful heart-shaped piece here is, is called Wonder Stone. And there are a number of places in the house where there's a heart. There are several outside that I know of. It's, it's really kind of fun and whimsical. The art here in the front foyer, a lot of it came from Russia. My current husband was with the state of Utah in the economic development area, and we had opportunity to go over to uh, a number of countries, many countries, and it was always on my list to look at what their art was like. I always tell people that it's cheaper to fly to Russia and buy directly from the artists than, than it is to buy one piece at a gallery. This piece here is maybe one of the best pieces in the house, and, and uh, we bought it in Rangoon, Burma. Some of them are copies. A lot of them are, are originals. I went to an art show. I took down the names of all the artists that I really liked, and then I called them after that and asked them if they would paint something for me in my price range. And they said, well, what's your price range? I said, well, 100, 150. It was amazing how many of them wanted to do that for me because they knew I couldn't afford the thousands of dollars that their art was really worth. Let's go into the living room now. I always tell people that I feel sorry for people that have a beautiful home that close the gate and, and are afraid to allow people in. This room has hosted so many, many parties. And I've always said, any arts group that wants to have a function here is welcome because uh, I, I know that often they are stressed looking for a venue and our place is always available. The moldings in the, the house are from uh, the Richard Cletting home that was torn down many, many years ago, and he was the architect of the state capitol building. When we were building, someone called us and said that they had not only these moldings, but also the doors from the cladding house, and they're all in the, on the third level of the home. My carpenters spliced them together, and they really did such a beautiful job. You can't even tell that they're pieced at the bottom. This beautiful painting behind me is one of five. Wally was buying the salvage rights to a lot of the different buildings that were being torn down in the 70s. He, he went over to this house that was going to be demolished on Monday morning and he came back and he said, you wouldn't believe what I found over in the Colmer house. As they had taken the moldings, the beautiful moldings off of the doorways, it kind of tore the wallpaper back and it was discovered that there were paintings on the wall. And I said, well, if there's one there, is there one over there? And, and in all, he found five paintings that were painted directly onto the plaster walls. Then they were taken up to the university and they put foam on the back of them. And so they're very heavy and they have to be put up with toggle bolts onto the walls into, into big beams. What's a toggle bolt? Oh, I don't know, some big <laughs> bolt that goes way deep in the wall. <laughs> if you'll look at the ceiling, Wally bought the salvage rights to a quarter of a mile long railroad trestle and some people might some of you might know what that, that is like it's not like these these timbers are not railroad ties they've never seen creosote they were a bridge that spanned a, a indentation when this mine was being dismantled the 
opportunity to buy these timbers was made available and so they were laboriously brought up to this site on huge, huge lumbering trucks and the whole house is put together almost like a Lincoln Log house with the timbers on the base being the base for the timbers on the next floor that are the base for the timbers on the next floor and cross timbers. The engineering firm that was called in just said, well, we've never seen anything quite like this, but it looks like it's gonna, it's gonna hold firm. <laughs> and it, uh, it, it has so far. <laughs> it's a Weber piano and it dates from 1887. My daughters, I had two daughters that were piano performance majors at the university and we, we really used the piano an awfully lot. I'm still so in love with classical music. There's so many pieces that they played and competed with that um, I feel like, gosh, I heard that over a hundred times <laughs> back in the day. Yeah. One of my neighbors had had a painting done of her and her daughter, and I thought, gosh, I've got daughters. I think I'll try and get that artist to paint um, a painting of us. And so he came and took slide photos because he was in the military. And he thought that he could do that when he was up in North Dakota or wherever he was. And so he painted this from, from slides. And it really is so very realistic of both um, Shauna and me and at the time and, and my younger daughter, Jenny. I had another daughter that was about a year and a half and uh, she's always been so resentful that she wasn't in the painting and I say, oh, Laurel, you just didn't have your look. And so <laughs> she's, uh, when she was an adult, I, I paid to have her have a painting done. This big tree would, was once alive, but we couldn't, <laughs> it just didn't have enough light to stay alive, so I've been protecting it for over 20 years, trying to keep the grandchildren from breaking the branches off because they're very brittle. <laughs> There's a ladder along the wall here that goes up to this to this area that where you can look out the windows, and I thought that there would never be a way for me to wash the windows if I didn't have something like this built, and it is very sturdy. And the grandchildren always wanted to climb up and I said, you can each climb up on your birthday and you can't do it alone. We will be watching you when, <laughs> when, you, uh, when you go up on your birthday. And so they've taken advantage of that some, some years. Uh, most of the things in the home are used. I, I never really went to a furniture store and ordered things up. I would, um, I'd find things at antique stores or even sometimes on the street. And my father had been really good at uh, gluing things together and so I got my own bar clamps and he taught me how to, how to glue some of these things that, I, that were broken that I found. They have meaning to me that, that I was able to save them from demolition. Mm -hmm. Let's go into the dining room and let me show you what, what one of the treasures is. Do you see this ceiling here? Uh huh. One day, some people up in Northern Utah called down to Trolley Square and asked Wally if he wanted any stained glass. And he said, oh, really, I, I really don't need any. I've got what I need. And he said, well, we, you know, we don't need a lot of money. The LDS Church has given this building to the community and we're gonna use it for a basketball room and we can't have this stained glass in there. All we need is money to buy plexiglass. And Wally came home and told me about it. So I went up and looked at it and I thought, oh my gosh, it's beautiful. They're in the original um, moldings that went around the windows and we had to take the glass out and take it to a, a glass company to do any repairs that were needed but the wood around the edges was taken to a place that was called the stripper then when the glass was put back in the grid work was designed to go around the the size that was needed for the room and we we really love this this ceiling furniture here in the room came from spain this is the story of Don Quixote. Here's Don Quixote and Sancho Panza, and here they are with Dulcinea on the horse. And Cervantes wrote Don Quixote back in the late 1700s, and I don't know just what year 
this would have been built, but certainly a long time ago. Here's Cervantes, but up, up here. <laughs> when Wally was in Spain uh, on a National Guard trip, he found this big brake front and five chairs. These chairs, but, but the chairs are not mates to the to the brake front. They would be older than that, and it had different leather. I've had that redone. But see, these gargoyles on the legs are, are very old. They could be, these chairs could be from the 1500s. I, I've never found anyone that really could authenticate what year they would have been, but I know that those gargoyles are, are unique. I had four more chairs built that I didn't want to have any competition with these. They're just very simple and plain. And, uh, and I use, you know, these. The, the other big king chair is over here. And this is the, this is the head, head chair. We, we built the loft thinking that the kids would play up here and you grandchildren did, didn't you, Sasha? Yeah, we definitely <laughs> did. We definitely I, did. I, I'm not too eager to be um, responsible for the great-grandchildren that, that go up here. I don't encourage them to go up. <laughs> okay. okay. I'm gonna turn it around so you guys can see what I see. When we were growing up, we would always write our crushes' names on the walls in here. So you guys, here's the view from on top of the loft. I had uh, three daughters and the three girls lived upstairs here in the three bedrooms upstairs. I love these spoonwork headers in this room. In the salvaging of all of these different mansions that were being torn down, the, the woodwork in uh, the mansions were very often salvageable and these headers make it uh, just very feminine to me. This is the bridal wall that shows my three daughters here, my uh, daughters-in-law, here these three, and then this is Dave's daughter. Well, <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this is a painting of, of me when I was uh, about 17. The two bedrooms up here shared a bathroom. This window in the bathroom is very old and was in one of the mansions down on South Temple in Salt Lake. I used um, beveled mirrors in a lot of places around the house. I love these chandeliers and we found them in a, in a real grinchy antique shop and I needed to have them uh, repolished. They're solid brass but people took them out of their homes because they tarnished and they weren't very pretty anymore. So that was um, something that was available to me then. Big piece here was uh, purchased from a, one of the mansions that was being torn down and, and the furniture was being sold off. It's really commodious. It has all of the bride dresses in this side and <laughs> you know, all different, different things. To get this upstairs was, <laughs> An unbelievable chore. Luckily it comes apart, yet even then it was terribly heavy. Yeah. When Wally was working in St. Louis on the St. Louis train station, that was a period of time when we were building this house and, and the reason that I had to take over as sort of general contractor that didn't know how to be a general contractor. When we went back to St. Louis, we needed a fireplace and, and there was an antique fireplace store. That, there was nothing but fireplaces in this fireplace store. And I picked this one to go on this particular fire fireplace and I think it's really beautiful. The headboard uh, here in back of the bed is actually the top of the front doors. The, the doors, uh, those beautiful front doors, were at a college in, in Illinois, and we, we cut the top off because we needed the doors to be that size, and then the part that was left over we made into this headboard. Once again, another painting of my, my children and my sons. This is a, a charcoal uh, drawing, and oh my gosh, it's exactly <laughs> the way they looked. He was a wonderful artist. When we bought the doors, 
I had no idea that there were going to be exactly the right amount of doors for, for this third level. Uh, not one extra and not one short. This was my oldest daughter Shauna's room and um, this beautiful bed uh, we found in uh, San Francisco at an auction and just put a bid in on at the auction not thinking we would ever be successful but we were and when they informed us that we had gotten this bed then we had to arrange to have it shipped here and when it came it had a great big horsehair mattress with it and, mm -hmm. and so you know it, it probably was from the middle 1800s I don't know mm -hmm. when horsehair mattresses stopped being being made. But yes, I have been a quilter, but then when my fingers no longer could really hold a needle well, I this one this one I just tied, and then this kind of a quilt here, I've made one of these for each of the grandchildren because I can do those just on the sewing machine. I've got a lot of different lovely plant stands that I've acquired at antique stores and such around the around the place. This um, this chest of drawers over here would be oh, at least 150 years old. It's a nice walnut piece. I, I love this bathtub. <laughs> this is where, where I really like to bathe. But all of the different wallpapers are original to the house. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, I haven't really painted many areas or recarpeted very much. <laughs> views of the city because if it's not if it's a clear day you can really see those mountains over there but it's kind of smoggy today two of the turrets are stairways and the other has a bathroom on the main floor and a fireplace on the bottom floor some of these stones that i look at i think how in the heck did one man get this up here? Isn't that <laughs> that is a giant stone, I'm not gonna lie. He, he had scaffolding, but I, he didn't have an elevator. <laughs> I don't know how he got that. The Constitution Building in uh, downtown Salt Lake City on Main Street, almost up to South Temple, was really one of the most important buildings in, that had been built in the city. It's right across the street from the biggest department store. Sasha, come and take a picture of it. It was built back in the 1800s before there was any electricity. And the name on the building wasn't neon or, or lighted up like we have now. When Wally bought all of the salvage rights of all of the woodwork in the Constitution Building, he also bought that Constitution Building sign. And it was a metal sign that is now the front of the bar. Right here on the front of the bar but you can see uh, how, how it was built out of all of this metal. It's not rusted, so it must have been some kind of tin. The wood in this downstairs area here is all heart red wood. And it's so beautiful. Out at the Anaconda Mill, they had this settling tank. It was a big round tank made of this wood that was about three by six or whatever. As the metals were put down in this bath to cool them off after they'd been heated, that the iron went into the wood and stained it in such interesting patterns. Heart red wood means that it doesn't have any knots in it. So it's pure because if it had knots, the water would leak out. So this is really rare to have a room that is is paneled with, or is not, they were put up in separate boards, but um, this has uh, heart redwood on the walls. I don't have a cleaning lady, and so any dust that you can see is, uh, <laughs> has a rightful place here. It does have a rightful place, amen. <laughs> I haven't done a thing to stop it. This, this uh, flying machine was made by a couple of sculptors that did it for a uh, trolley square and it hung there for a number of years but when it was not no longer going to be appreciated we uh, 
we brought it up here and, and it has had this home ever since. It's made from a John Deere cedar and a Singer sewing machine and other sundry uh, metal parts. Shh! Ringo, come here. Come here, Ringo. Bring me the ball. Give me the ball. When we were first married, we went down to Texas to learn to fly the F-86D. And I remember so vividly the, the night sky there because the, the, uh, the airplane had fire shooting out of its, um, out of the back of it at night when it went on its night flights. And, uh, and it was really exciting to think that my husband was up there flying one of those planes. Uh, and then when the National Guard was recommissioned and, uh, and given big transport aircraft that, uh, trans that took supplies to all of the different Army stations all over the world, um, that's how Wally was in Spain several times and brought home things every time that he was there, furniture type things, because he knew how to go to the, what he called the Rostro, and it's, uh, it's an area of Madrid that um, has antique stores, or junks, junk shops, really, junk stores, and, um, and he could find things that, that he knew that we would enjoy and brought them home. And then, um, and then when, uh, when he was, was the aircraft commander going over to Vietnam and took supplies in for the, during the Vietnam War, he had no idea at the time how advantageous that was going to be because when he came down with Alzheimer's and needed to go to the Veterans Hospital, he was considered a, a Vietnam veteran even though he had been there for two days. <laughs> so that was, that was his only service, uh, was to take that one aircraft over with supplies. These beautiful front doors are the base of, of the, these are the doors that were on the college in Missouri. Um, and then the, the top arch is the headboard that I showed you earlier, and it was stained a different color. Interesting. I give this door a coat of Marines bar varnish every year so that it will uh, keep its luster and be beautiful. <laughs>